Hello, hello everyone. How is it going, guys? It's Hany here. Welcome to Icing Inspiration live stream. Today I'm doing this on Tuesday because I can't do it on Wednesday. So I hope you guys can join us. Hello, Kathy. Let's see who is here today. Hello, hello. Thank you for being here. Yes, I know normally it's on Wednesdays, but I had to switch it this week and I didn't want to miss it. So um, here we go. Hi, Jeremy. Long time no see. How is it going? I hope you are doing well. Hope you got some um, time to relax and uh, maybe enjoy some fall activities with the kids. Hi, Sally. Hello, hello. Oh, nice. Enjoy your coffee and your um, time out. Hello. Hi. Hello, hello. How is it going? Hola. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Pat. So how is it going, guys? What's uh, what's happening in your neck of the woods? So today we are covering all things gingerbread. As you guys know, I'm obsessed with gingerbread, and I uh, wanted to share a few things with you before the kind of gingerbread season officially uh, kicks in. And so I'm going to, before we get started, as always, I prepared a PDF for you guys. I have so much stuff loaded here in my uh, in my folder. I don't know if we'll go over everything. <laughs> um, there's just so much to cover when it comes to gingerbread. So let's start with the PDF. So it's available in the coffee shop. I already put the link in the comment section so you guys can grab it. It's a free PDF. And I put there... Um, one of my favorite tools when it comes to making the gingerbread house panels and um, things that I use when I'm putting the houses together. For example, I use shelf liners to keep the um, my skewers when I'm supporting the walls from sliding and things like that. You can find it in the PDF there. And the PDF comes with two pages. So the first page is the tools and the second page it includes some recipes that I like to use, and also templates that you guys can grab at the at my co at my uh, um, shop where I sell the template. So let's just uh, once once more say hello. Hi, Dawn. Hello, 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 Charlene. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that you've been sick. I hope you feel better soon. Hola. Hello to Texas. Oh, it's your annual pumpkin party. Wow, fantastic. It's gonna be crazy town. Yeah, that's fantastic. I hope you um, you enjoy baking 7.30 till 2 p.m. That's a long baking marathon. What are you making? What kind of cookies? Let us know, Jeremy. All right, so let's, uh, let's talk about the, I'm not gonna go into the history of gingerbread because as you know, it, it kind of dates to like ancient times. And so uh, we're going to just talk about gingerbread houses and those I believe uh, they originated in Germany in 16th century and then German immigrants, they brought that tradition to United States or to America. So I'm going to just quickly talk about the ingredients. Let me just remove this banner here at the bottom. And all the recipes that I will be talking about and I will show you some of the recipe recipes in the videos, they are available on my blog, hanyulas.com. So basically gingerbread, uh, though for the cookies, you need flour, you need fat, egg. Uh, well, some recipes don't use egg, but my recipes use egg because I like the uh, what the egg does to the dough, it adds some flexibility and pliability. Solid sugar, granulated sugar, brown sugar, powdered sugar. You can use also brown sugar. I know it's not uh, very common to use for maybe for some of you, but it also adds some chewiness, which is really nice. Wow, Angie. Okay, uh, you have to break the break the recipe up. You have 300 peacocks to, de peacocks to decorate tonight. Well, good luck. <laughs> good luck. And thank you for being here, having to do this. Hello, Katie. Thank you for being here. Usually I'm on, on Wednesdays, but today I had to switch and I have to do it on Tuesday. So thank you for being here. Hello to Serbia. So let's see, Jeremy is no, no bakes, meringue, spritz. Wow, you're doing, you're doing a whole lot. 
so good luck. Oh, almond ricotta. That sounds really yummy. All right, so back to the recipe. So like I said, flour, fat. For the fat, you can use butter, margarine, Crisco. Depending, if you're making cookies for eating, I will just stick with butter. That's my preferred choice because it just tastes better. But cookies uh, for building, uh, margarine, some margarine is formulated for bake, usually margarine formulated for baking. Um, it, the melting point is higher than butter, so it will give you probably better results. And Crisco has even higher melting point than butter. Um, otherwise, butter, cookies with butter can spread a little bit. You have to chill the dough. There is like a whole science behind this. But then Crisco cookies, though, if you chill it, it doesn't really have a lot of effect because Crisco doesn't, doesn't freeze like butter does. Okay, so sugars, solid sugar, granulated sugar, brown sugar, powdered sugar. The recipe that I like to use for, uh, for kids, to give to kids, it uses powdered sugar. It's um, my honey cookie recipe. It's very popular with children. And I will also share um, a video where I will show you how to build those houses. Then we have liquid sugar, molasses, honey, corn syrup that could be dark or light. And I've seen, um, I've seen some other um, type of uh, corn syrup uh, that was like a lighter brown color, like caramel color, but I don't know if it's available anywhere. I saw it online. And then also, if anyone is here joining in from Australia or maybe uh, UK, I know you guys also use golden syrup, which is basically like partially inverted sugar syrup. So I think all of these can be used um, depending on your location. A lot of people prefer molasses because it just um, adds a really nice flavor and chewiness to your cookies. Um, however, it can be overpowering. So if you want to, you could mix molasses and honey. It will give you... Um, you're going to need to... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm throwing my hands around. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy. Thank you for noticing and for letting me know that I need to calm down. Yeah, I'm going to hurt my ar arm soon. Um, so depending on where you are and what's available to you and also how much money you want to invest, because molasses can get pretty, pretty pricey if you're making a big gingerbread house that nobody is, go that nobody is going to eat. So you can uh, then use corn syrup uh, that is, I think, um, cheaper than molasses. So all depends on whether you're eating these or if you if you're just going to display them somewhere and nobody's going to touch them. And then spices. I know a lot of people skip spices when making gingerbread houses because spices are expensive. But I love the flavor, or not the flavor, the smell they they add to the baked gingerbread. So uh, I definitely always stick with cinnamon, ginger, and cloves. And then if I can add. Other, other spices, I will add those as well. And paper, pepper has a really good property. It's, a, it's an ant deterrent. So if you have an issue with ants, you could use it and it should keep them away. Then we have leavening agents, baking soda, baking powder, and also baker's ammonia, which is not as commonly used as the other two. But I wanted to list it just uh, to have all three there. Now, when you're making a gingerbread house and you don't, you want the pieces to be um, um, exact, like exact. If you if you don't want any piece to spread, you need to uh, eliminate the agent. Okay, so uh, my recipe for construction gingerbread it doesn't include and doesn't have any baking soda or baking powder. However, if you plan on eating the gingerbread house, I would add some of the baking powder or baking soda, depending on the recipe. Okay, let me take this off and let's jump into the first video that I wanted to share with you. So this is my construction gingerbread house, okay? It's nice and dark. I use molasses in this recipe. It handles really nicely and the recipe makes a lot. Um, can now remember, I think it's nine cups of flour or something like that. But this, so this recipe will make, uh, I think, three like a standard size gingerbread houses. So if you're planning a big party, you could use this recipe to make a lot of pieces. You can see I have two rolling guys. These are not very thick. I, um, for the standard size houses, I use, um, this is about two eighths of an inch or something like that. Uh, you can see these are pin sticks from the hardware, hardware store. 
And you could use a silicone mat. I, for this video, I used the parchment because I believe that's something that most people have. But if you have silicone mats, you could also use it and roll the dough between two silicone mats. Now, when you're cutting the uh, pieces for a large gingerbread house, sides, front, back, whatever, um, you want to make sure that you are not cutting the pieces and then moving them, okay? So you want to cut your pieces on the backing um, medium that you're going to then slide onto your baking sheet. In this case, you can see I'm using parchment. You can also use silicone mat or perforated mat, whatever you have. Uh, but again, don't try to lift these up and then move them, transfer them onto the baking sheet. It's best to cut them out on the parchment and then slide the parchment onto the baking sheet so you can um, avoid handling these and uh, eat, they, they would easily get misshaped. Now this dough that I'm using for the, co the construction dough, um, I, I don't really have issues with um, spreading much. Um, so I don't really need to chill it. If you are experiencing some uh, excessive spreading, I mean, it will still spread somewhat. If you're experiencing excessive uh, spreading, you need to chill it for a little bit and then bake it. Now, I like to bake my uh, small pieces on one sheet, but you can see here I baked larger pieces. So if you have smaller pieces with the larger pieces, you might need to take the larger piece, the smaller pieces from the baking sheet sooner. Now you can also add texture, which is fantastic. And because this dough doesn't have any leavening agent, um, the wood grain that I'm now going to reveal underneath there, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's going to bake just like this. It's not going to spread or you're not going to lose the detail, which is fantastic. Now you can see I'm using a template. I often use uh, cardstock templates or acetate templates to cut the houses. Not all the shapes and all the uh, panels are available in a cookie cutter form, although there is a, there's a lot of cutters now available on the market, especially on the internet. And you can see to cut the straight edge, I'm just using a bench scraper. It works really, really well and a very fast results. If you don't have a bench scraper, you can see here I'm using a ruler. You can use a knife, but I find the dragging can some, sometimes distort the shapes. So using a sharp um, straight edge like this works really well. And if you have a question, just pop it in the comment section. I'm going to be talking a lot because there's a lot to cover. But uh, please pop it in the comment section. I will get to the comment section um, really soon. So here you can see I'm using a pen blade. This is a small uh, pen blade. And I'm going to pause because you see the green plastic I have under the parchment. This is to prevent me from scratching or damaging my baking sheet. Okay, So if you're doing this on the silicone mat, you want to make sure that you don't cut through the silicone mat because they are they're pretty pricey, right? So if you have to use a knife or exacto knife or any kind of sharp um, edge that could potentially uh, damage your baking sheet, or if you're doing this on the countertop, you have a nice wooden countertop, butcher block, please use uh, something to protect your work workspace, okay? So you don't damage your workspace. And then you need to obviously remove the, the leftover and then you can reuse it. One thing I've learned um, that the construction gingerbread dough, uh, what is it that makes the dough um, so sturdy? It's the flour and butter or fat ratio. Okay, so you are looking to, for ratio one to four. That means one part butter or fat and four parts of flour, which is a lot. So that's why sugar cookie dough, although I have used sugar cookie dough for ginger for smaller scale gingerbread houses, I don't know how they would evolve with, you know, in a, in, on a larger scale. But I have used them successfully without baking powder, and they, are, they actually still have some from last year, and they are fine. But I'm not sure on a larger scale. So now I'm just going to cut the door, and then you can bake these. If you're making small centerpieces, 
or like a, like a 3D um, scene, I would recommend that you cut your cookies thicker. You can see these are significantly thicker than the ones I used for the panel, okay? And then obviously you need to bake them for longer. There are a few problems that can arise when baking gingerbread, um, depending on how, like, for example, you can get bubbles or your, your dough can crack. So if that happens, yes, it can happen. Um, it's an easy fix while the dough is warm. You can uh, use a flat spatula or another tray baking sheet and just place it on top of those cookies. Um, Bubbles and cracking is usually caused by overmixing. So try not to overmix your dough when you are baking it, when you are ma making it. And also, um, excessive amount of flour can also cause uh, your dough to be on the drier side. And it can also cause some shrink it, shrinking uh, in the baking process. Now, if your pieces, if you, for example, are having an issue and your pieces are constantly warping as they are baking, you can also place a baking sheet. You can bake them, let's say, for five minutes and then put a baking sheet on top of them and um, bake them with the baking sheet like this. If you're making ornaments, simply use a drinking straw, make a small hole. You can also, with this dough, and I will show you, I actually baked some gingerbread today. With this dough, you can use all kinds of different fondant uh, molds, and uh, make uh, different decorations for your houses. You are not going to lose a detail. And I also love to use small Atiko uh, cutters for making windows and different things. You can see this is pretty hard. I know you can hear the noise, but um, this dough, it uh, bakes pretty hard. Now, another thing to remember, you need to bake these until they are golden brown. And if you feel like they're a little too soft, return them to the oven and just bake them until they are uh, rock hard, especially if you are trying to make a gingerbread house that nobody's going to eat, okay? So here are some of the pieces that I, I made and um, they, they are ready to be decorated. I also like to let my gingerbread pieces rest for a day before I decorate. It just does something um, and it really works. All right, so let's go to the comments. I've been talking a lot. Where did I get the texture mat? I, the texture mat, I, I, the one you saw in the video, yellow, the yellow one, it's, uh, it's ancient. It's probably 20 years old, but um, that was from a Chinese store, I, an online store. But you can now get these mats are, um, what's the word I'm looking for, ubiquitous. Like they are really everywhere. You can find them anywhere. And I, I, um, um, I actually put a link into, I'm going to grab the link for you again, guys. In the coffee shop, I have a, a PDF with all the tools that I'm using today. So you guys can, um, it's a free PDF. So it includes all the tools that I'm using today, including this type of, it's not the same texture mat, but it's a similar texture mat and it works really well. Um, Depending on the material and the quality, uh, the, the mat that I use, I just need to lightly uh, flower it and it just, it works really, really wonderful. Yes, I love the, I, yeah, absolutely. I, I normally, no, these, you can also use a lot of fondant tools. Okay, remember, you can use so many different tools for, for gingerbread. As, um, so if you are into cakes and you have a lot of fondant tools, you can also use those with your with your gingerbread to make molded pieces and things like that. Judy, hello. Thank you for being here. I actually, I, I changed it for today to be here on Tuesday because I can't be here on, on tomorrow. Um, but thank you. Thank you so much for your kind words. It means really, it means so much. Um, Okay, I'm just going through the comments now. <laughs> oh, okay, Jeremy, okay, <laughs> I, I see. <laughs> yes, okay. 
Okay, what were you doing with the brush, the wood grain pieces, just dusting them? Yes, I was just dusting them off. Uh, there was some uh, uh, residue, flower residue, so I was just removing that. Uh, especially if I'm if I'm adding texture, um, I think it's really important that I remove the the um, flower because um, unless you are going to cover that section, but why would I add texture if I'm going to cover it later with icing? So if it's exposed, I really like it to be uh, nice and clean. Sometimes it's not always possible to do that if you add too much flower, but um, in this case, it um, yeah, that's what I was doing. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and show you a few things that um, I've done in the past just to inspire you so you guys can get um, your creativity flowing. And this is gingerbread. And I used two pieces. Well, two. this is a um, Christmas slate for the Grinch house that I did uh, years ago. And so you can, you can actually use the gingerbread to, to make not only just gingerbread house but you can use it to most make smaller pieces like this and i'm going to use two sides i will have two sides of this and then smaller gingerbread pieces and we'll glue them together and it will uh, we will make a 3d uh christmas slate and for this tutorial you can find the full tutorial on my youtube channel everything is there these are just some bits that i wanted to show you so you like i said i want you to get inspired and create your own houses and all the recipes, all the recipes of, that I'm using are on my blog, hanielas.com. Okay, so here are the smaller pieces. I'm just gluing these together. And we will talk about the glue that is the key, key ingredient when it comes to building the houses. If your glue is not correct, it's a big problem. So we will talk about also that um, in a little bit. So here my little slate is coming nicely together. And then you can uh, obviously you can fill it with uh, with different things. And I used it on this. This I'm going to show you what the uh, Grinch house looks like in a second. So let's remove this, and let me just uh, grab. If I can find it, oh here it is. So this is the the Grinch house that I did a few years ago, and we'll talk about that. Uh, in more detail in a little bit. So I also wanted to show you that you can use um, gingerbread, the construction gingerbread. It's quite flexible and pliable. So you can use it to shape shape it over different, um, you, can, you can use pretty much anything in your house that can go in the oven and you can drape it over it and shape it and use it um, that way. Here I'm uh, making a, Braid for uh, Adam's uh, family gingerbread house. And then you bake it. Here's another example using as this is actually a chocolate mold, if you can believe it. So I'm using a small chocolate mold, putting it into the freezer until the cookie hardens. And now with a knife, um, You can uh, remove the excess and then um, as they are frozen, they will come out and then you can bake them and use them on your house. How cool is that? So you can use fondant tools, you can use uh, chocolate tools. Um, and this is another tool. This is a fondant tool, I think, from Wilton. You can use this. When I'm, when I'm rolling the gingerbread pieces like this for the houses, you can see me using um, the, I think it's two eighth of an inch thick um, rolling guide. This was a huge waste. I was like, what am I doing? See, I, I did that for the small door. <laughs> Just for that small door. You can also use it to uh, shape. And uh, I wonder if you will guess what this is. This is kind of, this is, this is great for Halloween. So maybe you'll guess what it is. Let me see what's in the comments. So um, I guess it's clear. It's a little skull. So you can shape it. As I said, as this uh, this construction gingerbread dough doesn't have baking soda or baking powder, so it will stay pretty much like you shape it. So here I'm using 
popular fondant technique to make rose, but instead of the fondant, I'm using gingerbread dough. And Judy, to answer your question, when you say that you bake the gingerbread to be rock hard, how long would that be in the oven? Now, it really depends on the size of like size of your cookie. Uh, normally, I start uh, at a three. I start at 350 or 375, depending on the size of the cookie. And then I do 10 minutes, then I have a look at it, and I add maybe another six minutes. And then if, I, if it's brown around the edges and it's not puffy in the middle, then I remove it from the oven. If later on I, I, I realize it's not fully baked in the middle, I will return it into the oven. Obviously, I don't want to burn it. So if your oven is misbehaving and you're having some issues, you might want to lower the temperature and just bake it for a little longer. Here I'm shaping my dough into, can you guess what this is going to be? So I made the rose. Uh, well, the rose is not going into this, but I wonder if you can, if you can, um, see, I mean, I mean, you can use the tools you have in your house to create different things. And so now I'm going to embellish this little piece. And what does it look like, anyone? Hello, Eva or Eva. Sally, thank you so much. I love gingerbread. It's my, it, I think it's one of, it, it is my favorite medium um, when it comes to cookies. And here I'm using, and this is, uh, this might be unusual, uh, unusual thing for you. This is foil, obviously, uh, food grade uh, aluminum foil. So I shaped it into a cylinder and I placed it inside and I placed it inside. Yes, it's uh, like a vase. Yes, exactly. Um, um, little like a little pot, little flower pot. Uh, so I placed it inside uh, for because I want the hole to to um, keep its shape. And you know, I mean, with the gravity and all, it would just like slump down. So this foil foil cylinder, it's going to help with that, so it's going to stay um, like base or uh, a flower pot. Hello, Gabby, to Southern California. Hello, hello. So here you can see I am using another piece of ginger, like it, it's just fantastic, isn't it? Textured gingerbread creating a little, um, little decoration and I'll show you. Let me remove this and Let's see if I can find this um, picture of the of my. Oh, maybe it's not here. I don't know if I, I if I uploaded this one. Maybe not. It it's a picture of my. I guess not. Adam's family house. I wish I had uploaded that. I have hundred pictures here, but not the not the. <laughs> yeah, it's. Oh no, maybe it's here. Let's uh, let's check. Let's check another folder here. Nope, <laughs> I can't believe it. All right, never mind. So it is. It, it you you got the idea what I was doing. So uh, you can also let me just share a few things with you. So I showed you different uh, ways how you can shape the gingerbread. Okay. So for example, these buttons. You saw the buttons. You can use these buttons as your decoration. On these are the ornaments that I made years ago to decorate. I love making ornaments for Christmas because they are so unique. So you can um, use it not just on the gingerbread house, but you can use it on different decorations as well, okay? All right, I'm gonna show you, because we talked about, um, I showed you a little bit of the, I think this is the video I'm looking for. Okay, here we go. So before I used foil, okay, you can you can use foil or parchment. Although parchment can be tricky because it uh, it gets undone very very quickly. So to shape the fall leaves, I use the little rolls of parchment. You can also use. I actually find that the foil is easier to use, and you can just place them onto the foil and then bake them like that and let them kind of cool for a little bit and then remove them and you see the leaves are shaped they are not flat 
So it really adds a bit of more dimension and like a realism to your project if you are trying to maybe um, create a, a gingerbread house or um, a project that needs a little bit of movement. So you can use um, parchment or foil or um, you could you could use also a, a pump, uh, not pumpkin a muffin pan to maybe drape the dough over the um, muffin pan or something like that. Whatever works, whatever works for you. So now you can see here I'm decorating the leaves with some oil icing, and these I used for my project for the fall gingerbread house uh, years ago. And this one I actually have here. So here we go. Okay, so you can see the leaves around. And how about the pumpkins? So the pumpkins are also the pumpkins are also a pieces of gingerbread. It's not just royal icing. Okay, you could use candies, obviously, but I baked small gingerbread pieces like this, and then I decorated them with royal icing. The middle, where the stem is, uh, there is a pretzel, pretzel stick. Okay, so you can use, it's really fun because you can use different um, edible mediums to create what you want to create. Here is another example. Here I have parchment, and um, you will not probably guess what this is going to be, but the parchment allowed me to shape this cookie like this. And then I created a like a foraging um, <laughs> um, squirrel. Okay, so you can you can um, have a lot of different um, different pans. And um, for example, here I have a better okay trying to talk, but I can't I don't know what I'm saying, huh? So um, this is a silicone half sphere pan, and you can drape the dough over and you'll get, for example, a piece like this that you can then decorate. This was from the Star Wars gingerbread house. Here is another example how you can shape the, I used foil here. This is for the flag and the flag is here. And this is the finished house. So you can, you can add uh, so many different things using gingerbread. You don't have to rely just on real icing. I know a lot of people will just add so much icing on, but you can use also gingerbread and decorate the gingerbread with oil icing, or you don't have to decorate. Now, I want to jump in because uh, uh, there's a lot to cover, but I want to jump into the building part, okay, which is super important, the, the key ingredient for the building, and I know a lot of people struggle with this, that is the most common problem, that the house falls apart, okay? So first of all, when you're buying a kit from the grocery store, you know, already pre-made kit with the royal icing and everything, the royal icing in the pouch, it's usually too runny to be a glue. So I would suggest adding a little bit of powdered sugar to it so you're not disappointed because it will just fall apart. Now, if your icing is too runny, it's, it's pretty much impossible because it starts dripping, gravity works, right? And it will take forever to dry. If it's too stiff, however, it's also a problem. Because if it's too stiff, the the um, it's not going to bind to the wall of your gingerbread. Remember your um, where is my for example here. Remember this gingerbread is pretty. It's it's very. I baked this today. So if you're trying to glue this with thick with really stiff icing, um, it's not going to it work. It will separate. So you need to use icing that is thick but not overly stiff. When making a gingerbread house, I also suggest uh, making your oil icing extra stronger. And by that, I mean, uh, what I mean by that is um, you can add more meringue powder or you can also add extra egg white to your to your royal icing. And it will make it, there is a lot of protein in there and it will make it uh, extra strong. This is cookies, cookies, galletas, Esther, it's galletas. Um, okay, hello from uh, Gingerbread is so underrated. I think it's changing. I think it's changing. I think, uh, um, gin well, Gingerbread, I think it's changing. It's becoming more and more popular. Oh, I, I, I forget, Sally. I don't know. I have 100 pictures here, but I won't be able to sh <laughs> share all of those with you. So I wanted to show you, though, 
uh, the process, like uh, I think here I have, so this is this is uh, from the Slated House from the Grinch. So um, as you can imagine, it's leaning, right? So it, it's going to be hard. How am I going to do it? So this is the process, okay? So I'm using pick icing and you can see underneath there, underneath I've got the, the liner, okay? I love using the liner because it helps keep either small bottles or whatever you're using to support the wall. It keeps it from sliding because the tray is very slippery, so it will be sliding. So I had to actually build this house in steps. So you can see I have the front wall up and the side, side walls are um, leaning and they have to dry first and then I can add The, side, the, the other front, and then the roof. Now, this was tricky because I also had to glue the chimney and the slate. So you can see I've got screws there. So it was, this was a several day project because of the drying time. Okay, so when you're making a gingerbread house, you also have to calculate how long is it going to dry. It may not take as long to decorate, but the drying time when you're building it, it can be significant, okay? Any questions? I know I'm talking a lot today. Um, there is also, let's see if I can find it. You can also use gingerbread house. And I know this is probably the most popular thing ever. Let's see if I can, um, yeah, I don't know if I have it uh, here. Okay, let's see which one is this. Oh no, we, I think we already covered this. No, this one. <laughs> Is this the one I'm talking? I'm, I'm looking for. No, this is the this is the nightmare before Christmas. This is shaping also, but I wanted to show you. I don't have it here. Um, I thought I did have it because a lot of times you'll see people using isomalt or you can use crush candies to fill different uh, different shapes um, in your cookie dough or in this case uh, we're talking about gingerbread. So here I used, um, what are they called, uh, Rolly Ranchers. The drying time, it's an excellent question. So the drying time, Kathy, it, uh, for, for the, um, okay, so when you're making a classic gingerbread house, and by classic gingerbread house, I am, I am talking about the classic, not the, this is a classic shape, okay? So the classic shape, not uh, not too big. I always uh, build the base, which is front, back, and side first, and then I let it kind of be for four hours or something like that, and then I add the roof. Okay. So let me show you that in detail. So here. I'm using, and this is my honey cookie recipe, which is, don't tell anyone. So if you haven't used it, you can find the recipe on the blog and you can tell everyone uh, because it's, it's, it's really popular around Christmas. It's not as, um, it doesn't have a robust flavor or class of um, gingerbread made with molasses um because uh when growing up i didn't know molasses i don't think we even have molasses maybe some specialty stores so we use honey actually gingerbread started with honey and then molasses was later introduced um so this recipe makes really nice cutout cookies and i also use it for uh, what i call edible gingerbread houses because you can eat these they are not uh rock hard. they are they're hard but not rock hard like the construction gingerbread that you can break your teeth on um, although I know people that have eaten the construction gingerbread dough and they love it. Maybe you can dunk it in milk or something like that. But to make the edible gingerbread house, I uh, usually add uh, there is baking soda in this recipe. And so I've tried it without the baking soda and it was awful. It was awful. It was not edible at all. I mean, it was edible, but it just wasn't my cup of tea. So I... Um, scale down on the baking soda. So I use a little bit less and it's included in the recipe recipe card. I think it's one eighth of a teaspoon or even less than that. And then you can um, bake the cookies. These baking the cookies, because there is baking soda, they're going to bake slightly rounded around the edges. And I love that look so much. 
So I'm glad that I was able to um, keep this look of the rounded edges. Now, if you are making these cookies and you want to decorate them, and if you're using the full amount of baking soda, um, a lot, I've seen people decorate the underside instead of the top because of the way it's rounded, it may be harder for the icing to stay on. So you can decorate the underside. You see the edges are slightly rounded, but it's perfect. So the drying time could be, um, Kathy, I wanna go back. So the drying time could be seven hours for the whole house, for example, like the base, it's um, four hours and then you add the roof and I don't wanna touch it once I add the roof. I let it dry overnight and then I can mess with it and do add, do add the decorations and things like that. So here we're going to glue the house. You can see I'm using thick icing, but it's not overly thick. Ideally, if you can, you can also match the color of your icing to the cookie, cookie color. So in this case, I would probably color it with some brown and maybe some yellow or maybe ivory icing, ivory food coloring to get this. Um, to get, the, to get the color match, but I don't think it really matters. And many of you are probably going to make some, some gingerbread houses uh, with, with the kids. And what I find that with the kids, if they are using little candies and chocolate and you can, you can use their favorite things, it's really the best when the house is built. You know, it's built and you can just set it in front of them and you can have a bunch of different candies and um, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, gluing it and then they are not really patient. They want it to be done and it's falling apart. So if you can build it night before, maybe or evening or morning off and at night your house will be ready and you can then uh, decorate it with, with different things. If you're not planning on um, elaborately, obviously, decorate the sides. If you're planning on adding a lot of the different things like flat icing, then you have to decorate each piece on flat surface, let it dry and then build it. But in this case, we're going to add some candies and I just find this works really well because it's um, it's fast and kids can see the, the result immediately. So now I'm adding my my panels, holding it in place for a couple, couple seconds, and then you can use the skewer. You can see underneath there, I have the liner again, because it helps to keep the skewers in place. And once, once this dries, you can add the candies or uh, whatever you, maybe, maybe you want to add dry fruit. I was just thinking of that. It would be really nice to maybe have some dry, um, oranges or something as the roof and layered, or I mean, it, it, the possibilities are endless. And then you can um, eat eat the decorations as the holidays go on. So here I'm, here I'm using green M and M's, alternating the colors, making the wreath and smaller red M and M's for the berries. So this is like a, a simple. Um, simple idea if you don't want to spend days and hours um, with decorating a gingerbread house because if you're adding um, if you're adding a lot of details it can take hours to do now just some sending sugar some sprinkles and you can see I'm using the back of the spoon very easy kids can do, do this easily And like I said, if you're getting a house from the store, it's usually um, there's usually a pouch with royal icing and this royal icing or some kind of icing, and it's usually too runny for the glue. So I would decorate with it, but then I would probably dump it into a bowl and add some powdered sugar and put it into a small Ziploc bag or something like that, and then use it as a glue. Okay, now we can add some gingerbread men. And now just attach the tree on the back of the house and it's done. Okay.
So let's let me remove this. And I wanted to. Um, I've received few pictures from you guys, which is exciting. So let's have a little ice cream. <laughs> So as far as the, I received some images, I don't know if I, I have them all here. I have Darlene, I think Sally sent me pictures too, but I don't have them here. So Darlene, already very, very uh, creative. Last week I showed you guys how to make the um, coffin cookies. So, so I love that you added your own spin on these with the ghost and the skull and the bats and a little bit of, uh, I guess this is like dirt or sa like sanding sugar. I love these. And then also, um, I made, we made these during the live a few weeks ago. And these are fantastic. I absolutely love how you did all the details. Great job, Darlene. And this is from last year. Do you guys remember last year's live stream? Um, I did a tombstone with a cookie skull. Do you guys remember? So this is from Darlene. Thank you so much for sending these to me. And um, I also wanted to show you, so here we go. This is what I was talking about. So these are the panels that, are decorate, that I decorated flat. This is for the Snow White house, okay? So they were decorated flat, left dry, and then you can build the house. You can see in this house, I used a lot of real icing transfers. So this is a real icing transfer here, for example, little basket with apples. So you can also use real icing transfers to decorate your house. If you have uh, some ideas for that, you can also um, make the transfers ahead of time. You can make roses and things like that ahead of time. This is from many, many years ago. This was a Christmas, again, Christmas, um, again, a gingerbread shaped, you can see the holly leaves are baby, so again, shaped on uh, parchment or foil, okay? And I'm going to, I wanted to show you these because we often uh, do the windows and a lot of people use, like I said, um, isomalt or you can use crushed candies or you can also use uh, gelatin sheets. These are ornaments that I did uh, several years ago for Christmas and you can see the window it has like a diamond pattern there. So it's it's a gelatin sheet. So if you don't want to use um, isomalt or candy, scratch candies, you can use gelatin sheets and they are very quick to use. And uh, I don't know if they are inexpensive because I was looking and I did include some gelatin sheets in the PDF. Um, they were not exactly cheap, but... Um, but maybe you can find some that are uh, not as expensive. Do you recommend to dry the gingerbread on the cookie machine? Dry to dry. Do you may oh? Do you recommend to dry the gingerbread on the cookie machine? Dry icing to dry the cookie fast. Um, you you can um now here here is another thing. Okay, so this is great. Thank you, Mary, for that question. Because when uh, when you build your gingerbread house, and this happened to me. Okay, we had a wood stove where we lived before. So as you know, wood stove will generate a lot of heat and dry heat. So uh, I, I, I had my gingerbread house in a close proximity to the wood stove. Imagine instead of wood stove, your, your um, fireplace and your mantle. Let's say you have your gingerbread house on a mantle. So the dry heat will dry the icing so much that it literally separates from the cookie. So yes, you can use the, I, I guess you're talking about the dehydrator. You can use the dehydrator, but I wouldn't leave it there for too long. You know, you have to be mindful, I guess, of the time, um, how long you leave it there, but I wouldn't leave it there for, for a long period of time, just so it doesn't dry out too much. Once you have a gym, <laughs> okay. Did that happen to you? <laughs> I think um, gingerbread houses are a lot of a lot of people are afraid of them because of the um, because they can fall apart. But if you use the right glue, it's very seldom that that would happen. And here is another thing that you can use. You can also use, and I wish I had the video for that. I I thought I did have video. Oh, here it is. I do a video. 
So this is a uh, 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 centerpiece I did. Uh, you can see it's constructed from these three lovely cutters that I got at Hobby Lobby. And I baked the shapes like this. I used a little bit of water on the seams there to make sure that there is a good bond. And then you have to let it cool completely. Don't mess with it, let it, let it cool on the baking sheet. Now to make this upright, I decided to, instead of royal icing, which would take forever to dry, I decided to use, and this is another thing you can use, you can use um, caramel or melted sugar. Uh, I believe you could also use isomalt to glue your pieces. The only thing is the, the caramel or melted sugar, it's extremely hot, so you have to be very careful so you don't burn yourself. And the bond is instant, okay? So if you're trying to, if you're making, uh, if you're trying to glue something that needs to be at a certain angle, you better be right because it will it hardens instantly, so you you won't be able to adjust it. As a with royal icing, you can adjust it because the icing takes a little longer to dry. Okay, so this was the piece I did, and then you can I believe it like this or cover the bottom with icing and some sprinkles for a festive look. Okay. All right, everyone. So I think we, I'm going to wrap it up. I have so much more to share, but um, I think uh, we, we've we covered the, a lot of things about gingerbread. And thank you so much for being here. Next week, we are going to be live on Wednesday. Wednesday. Um, oh, before we go. So this is the, I was talking about sugar cookie. So this is a sugar cookie. And I still have this cookie and I made it last year. But this is a smaller house. It's not a big house. With sugar cookies, again, I would eliminate the baking powder and bake the cookies for longer so the panels are, are firm. Um, otherwise, there is a chance of collapsing. I know some people also use, this just goes my mind, use melted chocolate to glue the panels. Myself, I haven't done the chocolate, but uh, let me know if you've done chocolate. I would love to hear what you guys think. I made some royal icing recently and it had a lot of air bubbles. Oh, yeah. They are air bubbles, yes. So with air bubbles, air bubbles, they're, they're, uh, they're so annoying. <laughs> they're so annoying. Um, so it happens to me as well. I think it happens to uh, every decorator. Um, the air bubbles, they just happen, unfortunately. So what you can do, you can cover your bowl with icing with a damp paper towel or, or a kitchen towel to prevent icing from crusting. And then let it sit for like 15 or even 10 minutes. You're going to see the difference. The air bubbles will start to rise to the surface and then you can start popping them. You can very gently then uh, stir the um, real icing or you can use your the force of your... Uh, <laughs> The force, and uh, you can bang it on your countertop, and you'll see the air bubbles popping. I also seen someone, and I don't know if anyone here um, have tried it, that people um, will will uh, twist their bag or something like that. Like they will, I don't know, anyone. Like in the in the bag, there is icing, and you see the bubbles. So I've seen. I think online then somebody made like a propeller. <laughs> it's not a propeller, but you know what I mean, like a um, helicopter with it or something. I don't know. It was very, very strange. I don't know uh, if it actually works for bubbles. I have not tried it myself, but I usually just, like I said, I let it rest. I cover it to make sure that it doesn't crust over. And then I very gently like go over either with a scribe or you can use a spoon or, or a, a toothpick to pop those annoying bubbles. And maybe also try not to um, be so vigorous when you are uh, um, adding water. Oh, yes, Eleni, thank you. So you so is that how it's done? You, you, you have icing in your piping bag and then you just propeller and uh, you just do that and it works? It's like a centrifuge or whatever. So, okay, so I guess it works. So if uh, I have to try it myself, I don't know. But with my coordination, I can imagine that the bag would just fly off. I would just lose it and I would have uh, royal icing on the walls. And I, I hate to do that to this wall because uh, we would have to repaint the whole thing. Okay, 
too much talking now. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up, guys. Thank you for being here. And again, there is a PDF in the coffee shop. Um, it works, but use good bags. Yes, good point. Good point. All use good bags. <laughs> Helicopter is popular in Poland. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Thank you, Eva. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And I will see you next week. And next week, we're going, uh, it should be regular time on, on Wednesday. Okay, guys? So until then, have a great one. Bye. And happy Halloween.